seen what was submitted by Representative Bedford. I don't know what the expectations were for that internship. Um, again, I'm not a fact finder here. But you, but you seems like you indicated you were comfortable with him res resigning based on this conversation. And, but you've obviously made some sort of determination that there was some sort of credibility to what Representative Guido was indicating that there was a significant problem, correct? The, the issue as discussed in front of me by the two gentlemen indicated that Representative Betancourt agreed that some records weren't correct and um, was not in agreement that other records were incorrect. But you concluded um, that it was appropriate so I, that he... Given, given that response, I thought it sufficient. I thought it, I, uh, that he should be done. Mr. Speaker, now, what, what exactly was incorrect and, and you know and, and so forth? There seemed to be a, a detailed uh, an acknowledgement of uh, at least a partial but detailed misrepresentation of the work he did during this internship, and that was unacceptable to the standards of uh, of uh, the House of Representatives. In, in unacceptable to my standards and unacceptable, I think, to the people of New Hampshire standards. Mr. Speaker, but, but with regard to what he confessed to you that day... I mean, he wasn't making confessions. Well, to whatever... Just listen to these two right, whatever he, yeah, whatever he said, he actually did. Um, why wouldn't it be appropriate for him to resign immediately? Why... why a, again, why again there seemed to be enough disagreement okay. and uh, between the individuals. Um, there seemed to be a process that, that needed to be followed that uh, uh, included these two individuals, essentially a teacher and a student in the school, that I thought it uh, appropriate that it begin immediately. I wanted to make sure that there was self-disclosure and agreement by the representative that the self-disclosure, that process begin, and um, for uh, us to be able to close out our session. So when he was issued a statement, that did not at first acknowledge personal problems. That was not, did not meet your expectations as well. Uh, it certainly did not meet my expectations of what he would be saying. But you and you saw that statement, right? Right. Combining this with the uh, cumulative effect of uh, the situation with Mr. Mead, and now this, um, obviously, is lots of fodder for the Democratic Party in an election year. So. Uh, how are you going to seek to refocus your energy giving all, given all of this uh, situation? We have an important agenda that we pursued for the people of New Hampshire and achieved substantial results for the people of New Hampshire uh, in pursuing that agenda. We put together a, a budget that uh, did not raise taxes, but indeed lowered substantial taxes. We have put together a, a budget that caused us, uh, enabled us to be able to live within our revenues. We've seen positive results of that. We've gone from uh, an un unemployment rate of approximately 5.8% down to an unemployment rate of 5%. Um, as our workforce has grown, in contrast to the national economy, our workforce has been growing. 10,000 more of our neighbors are uh, employed today who weren't employed when we took over. Uh, this majority. The unemployment number itself has gone down 4,500. Um, we need to continue to pursue that agenda. We need to be able to pass on to the people, um, for example, constitutional amendments that will prevent the overspending and overtaxing uh, that took hold in the four years that we um, preceded our coming here. We, we can't, for example, subject them to 25 percent budget increases and over 100 in uh, new and increased taxes and fees. Uh, we need to focus in on that. That's the promise that we made to the people of New Hampshire. Those are the promises that we've kept to the people of New Hampshire so far, and we're going to continue to keep those promises. There will always be the political rhetoric, but, but there's also promises, and those are the promises that the people of New Hampshire um, are going to be attentive to in November. Not, not the political rhetoric that uh, others would wish us to respond to. One more question. Will DJ Bettencourt still be taking a job at the New Hampshire Legal Rights Foundation? Uh, back in 2008, uh, I was in, uh, among a number of people who founded the New Hampshire Legal Rights Foundation um, to uh, promote free market, uh, uh, liberty-oriented solutions uh, 
through the courts of New Hampshire. The one case that we did pursue was a redistricting case where we tried to get the uh, New Hampshire Supreme Court to order an early implementation of the 2006 amendment, uh, primarily because uh, all of us who were involved in that became uh, also, were also involved and became more intensely involved in other political things, including you know, myself eventually uh, running for speaker. Um, that organization uh, had become uh, pretty much uh, stagnant over time, although it remained in place. Um, there had been some recent discussions that we wanted to get that going. We'd included uh, Representative Betancourt in those discussions because we understood he was in law school and we thought it might be a, uh, an interesting project for him after he uh, came out of law school. Those discussions started two or three months ago. Um, he had been engaged in, in order to see if he could you know, get it, get the organization going from a funding point of view, a website point of view, you know, um, and he had been working on it. Um, the uh, uh, organization didn't really come up in any discussions we had over Friday or, or anything like that. Uh, the board of directors of the organization over the weekend has met and severed all relationship with uh, Representative Bettencourt. Okay, thank, there, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a, as an attorney, is this a recordable? I'm going to ask a question if she doesn't want to answer it then. Certainly doesn't have to. Um, 11 weeks of, of reports. Well, do you know if any of them were done on state uh, equipment? And is this a reportable offense to the Bar Association or the Professional Conduct Committee as an attorney? Uh, as an attorney, um, I'm not going to provide legal advice in a press conference. Um, so I, it'd be something that I'd want to study and, and sit down and think through. Um, and beyond that, John, I've never seen these laws. I, I, don't, I have no idea what is on them or not on them, the extent to which they depart from reality and, and all or any particular portion. As I told Representatives Guida and Bettencourt, um, during that Friday morning meeting, it would be entirely inappropriate for, for me to insert myself in a position of being fact finder. I just have to make sure that when I hear um, a representative who has given sufficient indication that there might have been a lapse from the high standards that they, uh, uh, my caucus and, and I personally place on how we are to act both as legislators and outside the legislature, that there be a, a, an appropriate response, and the appropriate response in that instance was made by some representative that the time had come for him to uh, concentrate on, um, once we close out the session, concentrate on addressing this issue, and in and, uh, and, and doing so he should resign his, his position. Did he do uh, any uh, internship uh, with your firm or you in, in the time that he was interning? Thank you. I mean, Mr. Speaker, I mean, just speaking generally, I mean, is it, uh, I mean, how disappointing is it for this to happen to somebody you were close to and who played a vital role in a lot of the accomplishments you were talking about? I joined my colleagues in the Unexpected, shocking, and disappointing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Off the record, John. Sure. In response to your PCC question, you yes. Uh, having been a member for six years, yeah. uh, PCC complaints are brought against city lawyers. Right. Well, you know, I didn't know if someone who was on their way to become a lawyer was subject to their. Uh, not until they passed the bar. The question becomes, with the bar, I don't know the answer to the bar. I thought that might be the case, but I haven't had a chance to call it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Good to re-meet you.